Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I'm back up in space again and this is where, more or less where we got to at the end of the last episode. We've got my um, rocket, sh my, my spaceship here that comes in from Asalia with all the rocket fuel in it and then that, that gets pumped out into these tanks here. And I've also got a supply of ion stream which as I said in the last episode is coming in by train to here from the, um, from the energy science area where it's all being made. So in theory, we then have lots and lots of both ion stream and rocket fuel available here, which we can then pass along to, to re keep the uh, spaceships refueled. Now, this one keeps itself fueled. If we look in, inside it, this pump here fills the spaceship from outside. So when it lands, there's another, pi there's another pipe here on the other side that pumps so pumping the fuel in when it's out on the salient. That fills up all of these tanks inside it, except for this one in the bottom corner here. That one... As you can see here, there's, a, there's an additional pump that's pumping fuel from this tank into this pipe, which feeds this tank and also the engine. So the idea behind this is that this tank should always be basically full. Um, I think this tank, this is set to pump... Um, I forget the exact rules of this pump. Let's, let's have a look. This pump, oh, this pump is set to pump when A is 1.1 thousand, so that means whenever the spaceship is landed on Asalia, the uh, this this pump will run. And so while the ship fills, while the ship fuels up on Asalia and fills up all of these tanks, it will also pump fuel into this tank to make sure this one is full before it takes off. Then on after takeoff the pump will stop running to, to ensure there's as much fuel available to go into these tanks as possible because there's always going to be plenty in this. This, this, this tank is more than big enough to um, to keep the, the engine running to take to do the trip from Asalia to Norvis orbit and, and back again. As you can see it's used 10,000 of that in the blasting off from Asalia orbit although it had some help from the other ones and then flying over here which was exclusively just this tank. And so it's used up, that's used up 10,000 of it. And on the way back, it'll use up maybe another 10,000, probably less, but but no more than another 10,000. So there's plenty in there for, to keep that running. And so all the, um, but that means that then when we when we land here, these two pumps can drain all of these tanks and not have any worries about the ship being able to get back to where it came from. So that that uh, that works nicely. Then we, so then we've got these two pipes here with the uh, with the fuel in them. And we need to get that along to all of the spaceships that are going to come in. So I've got a bit of a proof of concept here. This is going to be my first cargo spaceship. As you can see, it's got a, um, a warehouse in it to store, the, to store all this, the stuff. And these things have a capacity of 512 stacks. So that's about the same as um, about the same as a rocket. A rocket, I think, it also is it's about the same as a check. Um, 500, so it's ever so slightly bigger than a rocket. But only very slightly. So the idea is we um, have this 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 well this spaceship will land on another planet somewhere where we want to get some stuff, and that'll come in along this belt here. It'll get loaded into the warehouse. Once it's full, we'll set, use the signals down here to tell it to blast off again. And as you can see, I've not actually wired any of these up yet. This is a uh, on on the to-do list. And then once it's full, it'll blast off and fly back over here, and then we'll use the IDs on these. Um, on these clamps, so this one is number is, is a number four, this one's number th two, and so on. So they've all got different numbers, so you can make sure the spaceships always clamp in the right place. Um, and then it'll attach on here, and um, and, and and then all, and then the these inserters will put the all of the contents of the warehouse onto the belt, and it'll flow out here, and it'll go into this warehouse, <coughs> where from there it'll then get picked up by trains and taken off to to wherever it's needed. So previously. When we were using the rockets, we'd have the ro we'd have a rocket fly in whenever the um, whenever the cargo landing pad emptied. So ro then, when this is empty, a rocket will come come in with another 500 stacks of, um, of 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 sulfur, which will then get dumped into here, and the trains can come along and pick them up. This is basically the same, except instead of where instead of calling in another rocket when the uh, rocket when the landing pad gets empty, when this empties, that'll signal to the ship that it's time for it to fly back to um, to wherever it was getting the whatever materials from and reload and refill on whatever it needed um, in this case I'm planning to send this one out to Kothar to get Iridium and the main there's a couple of reasons for that um, it's because I need to go out there anyway in order to upgrade the drills from the small area mining drills which we can see if I look at Kothar I've got the normal normal small drills here and there's been a change in one of the updates recently where, where that says you have to use large area mining drills in order to mine iridium these days. And so I like to stay on the on the latest version of these things because there's a few other changes and things that have been made that would be quite nice to have. So that's a piece of pipe missing there. Never mind, I'll uh, fix that later. Um, 
So I want to upgrade those to, to the large mining drills, which will then mean I'll be able to upgrade to the latest um, version of the mod pack. And I also want to put in a few more of these as well. I want to put in a mine down here and here and probably up here. Just because, I mean, there's plenty of it at the moment, but I just feel that I'm under 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 using it a bit, under utilizing it a bit, and this is quite a slow process digging this up. I think it runs at a, a, a fifth of the normal speed, uh, so it's going to take quite a long time. It takes a long time to get enough to fill up the um, the station, and if the trains start coming because I start using more iridium, then that's just going to get more and more um, demanding on, on on the system. So I want to try and keep keep this up, keep it up, keep it full, keep it up to date, keep it keep it running nice and quickly. And I also suspect that as I get more and more science being done in space, I'm going to start using more and more of these things, uh, more and more iridium, more and more of everything else. So I want to just make sure I've got a good supply of it running and available. Other than that, I also need to put in this um, umbrella defense here, and I need to do that fairly quickly because there is a um, there's a, a coronal mass ejection due here in just over an hour, so that's a bit worrying. I don't know if I'm going to make it here in time. When, if, given that I have, given that I want to build up the um, the 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 the, the, the uh, start making the large mining drills as well. I'm not sure I can do all of that in an hour in an hour and still get out here. So I might fly straight out here first, in possibly in my fast ship, and then carry on from, and then sort of just work things out from there. So we shall see. On a similar topic, so that's that's this that's what this spaceship is going to do eventually. And so as you can see, we, we're going to run the pipes along here. They're going to get connect to these pipes here. Now I haven't really left enough room for this because of the fiddliness of getting pipes to pass by each other. So I'm going to probably make this a little bit wider. Run this fuel pipe down as an extra square across, and have the um, have the what do we call it um, ion stream coming along here, and then have this coming from about here down to about here. Actually here should be okay as long as there's a gap. And then I can run that along there and there's still room to put in the pipe to link those up and then an underground pipe to go under there like that. So something like that should should work reasonably well I think. Once I've got that in place once I've got that in place and working, I can then make a copy of this entire thing, put it here, and then well there probably isn't room for yet another one. As uh, so it's probably going to be three three rock three spaceships per per row along here but then I can put in another row of them along here I'm gonna to need to get rid of this but that's fine because I'm, I'm, I'm producing the material science packs elsewhere now so I don't need I don't need this bit anymore that's just unnecessary and so I'll be able to start having lots and lots of these spaceships coming in here and then I'll, and I can form then then essentially an array like like this one uh, so for all of the different materials that are being shipped up, but on a slight, but on a larger scale up here, and using the spaceships instead of the rockets, and that mean I'll be able to gradually phase these out of, out of use. So just fly things around in a slightly more efficient way. <laughs> Another thing I've done recently, and I don't think I've talked about, is I've been out to Henkiseswi, and I finally put in this stone drop-off patch here. And I've been saying I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this for absolutely ages. So that's collecting stone from the mine down down here, which is still at 3.6 million. So there's plenty of stone left there at the moment. And the reason I need this is because I need a flow of it coming up here, and then all the way up here, being turned into bricks in order to turn these bricks into green circuits in order to make red and blue circuits. Because one of the reasons I came out to Henke Sesway, and the reason I built all this up, was because there's a much more efficient recipe for making blue circuits that uses literally half as many green circuits and half as many red circuits, in exchange for also using some holmium cable. So I wanted to make sure I was doing this as efficiently as possible, so I wanted to switch over to using that recipe. But I, I assumed I was going to be getting through a lot more holmium than I was, so I expected the amount of stone that's being produced here, coming out of these out of these systems to be enough to keep that running. It turns out it wasn't. So up here we've got this system which is pulling out all of the um, all the stone as it comes up here, putting it into a chair. This is, this is, there's a little bit of a buffer thing here, but the idea is that this should then allow me to use as much of this as possible. Um, isn't a great design to be quite honest with you. Maybe if I do this as well, we'll feed in a bit more on the other side. Um, and that'll, I don't know, it hasn't made, really made any significant difference. But the idea is that we shall make sure that we use the, the stone coming in from here before we use the stone coming from the train. At this point, we've run into a bit of a backlog, and I might, so I might need to turn some of it into sand. But I don't really want to. 
but I might have to. We'll have to we'll have to keep an eye on this and see how it goes later. Because I don't yeah, it's I need to make I need to make sure that the holmium keeps flowing because I don't want to run out of this stuff where I'm um, in, in, in on the space station. But I also need to make sure the blue circuits keep running. And I, because I, so I don't run out of those either. So it's a, it's a careful balancing act, and I might need to have some sort of thing that maybe maybe have a circuit condition that monitors this this chest here. And if it gets over 2,000, then we start feeding stone up here as well in order to turn it into into sand and into glass to ship out as as glass to everywhere anywhere that needs it. So there's a bit of a some some tricky decisions need to be made there, and I'll. I, I shall see, and it could be that because we've got we've got a full rocket here, we've got quite a lot of holmium here, we've got a full rocket here, and quite a lot of blue circuits. So it might be that there's enough buffer here that by the time any of, e either of these, by the time we need more holmium to be loaded into the rocket, the the uh, will flo have flown off some more blue circuits as well. Especially with some of the stuff like if we look have a look back on here, I was complaining about this a bit in um, a previous episode. I think it's talking about the. Um, the tier two supercomputers down here, these these ones, they require um, 500 blue circuits in order to make one of these quantum supercomputers, plus another 50 quantum processors, which require another so that's another 50 processing units in in of, it, of that as well, and and a bit of holomium and some quantum phenomenon data. So there's a lot of stuff going into these things, but that could produce quite a nice draw on the um, on the on the um, blue circuits if I if I if I feel I need to. So if we look up here, we've got the rockets landed here. We've got about half a um, half a rocket's worth of uh, blue circuits in this in the landing pad. So it's going to be a little while, like 26,000 blue circuits, which is apparently 52 uh, supercomputer Mark IIs. So um, before I actually get round to ordering another one. But then also the holmium is probably okay. That's running a little bit lower. We've got um, oh no, I take that back. Uh, holmium is much less dense, so we've got, even though we've only got 23,000 23, of it, which is slightly less, we've still got, with that's still two-thirds of a rocket. Um, no, in fact, in fact that's ne nearly an entire rocket, 480 stacks out of 500. So, it's going to be, there's, there's plenty in there to, to keep that going for a while, so we might be okay? I guess we shall, we shall wait and see and, um, fingers crossed and hope for the best and stuff like that. So that's uh, basically what I've got for you today. We've got um, these these supercomputers being built, and I, I, I can't, I, I'm sure I've talked about it, but I can't remember if it was on stream or in video. So I'll touch on it again. But the um, we we can make the tier one supercomputers. That requires 100 super, 100 blue circuits. So it's, that's even even more than required for this because you require um, the supercomputer as well. So it's actually 650, even more expensive. Um, but there's there's two two tiers of supercomputer I've got now, and the tier two ones are literally twice as fast. If I look up supercomputers, we've got the tier two ones here. They they have a oh, it doesn't tell me. Oh, here we go. Um, they have a crafting speed of two. These have a crafting speed of one. So they they run literally twice as fast. However, given the price of them, I reckon it's more efficient to. Um, and actually looking at the power as well, this uses one megawatt, this uses two and a half megawatts. So in every way, it's more efficient just to shove in two tier one supercomputers. Um, the only thing, I can, the only other difference would be if they have different numbers of module slots. But um, I'm not worrying about that at the moment. Um, so yeah, essentially the, the, these, these ones are worse in every possible way than having two of these supercomputers. Except that there are a few recipes that can only be done in the quantum supercomputers, in the tier two supercomputers. So the two of those I actually care about at the moment. One of them is, is the one we're doing here, which is where we, uh, we're formatting the, um, the the memory cards. And if we do it in the tier two supercomputers, we can use this recipe, which is the efficient data card formatting and gets you 80% of your blank data card, 80% of your cards through as reusable blank data cards and only junks 20% of them. <clears throat> if you do the tier one version of it that can be done with the tier one supercomputers, then you only get 70% of them back. So it's probably worth it for that, that bit of gain in there. I've said this before, but I need to add in some extra unloading along here for the um, for these memory cards because this is a bit full. Um, these these chests are a bit bit full for my liking. The other thing that needs the tier two supercomputers is over here in the science area, where we're making the insights from the um, no, we're taking in the insights and making the significant data. And these you can with these ones, I'm currently using the tier one supercomputers, and that means I'm turning. 36 inputs, 12 of each type, into eight significant datas. I also have the option to um, 
make significant data this way using all four of them, nine of each, which is the same number in total, still 36, but it make you, but you get 10 significant data on the output. So it's more efficient. You get more significant data for your um, input, uh, for your input and in insights. So I think this will be quite a nice one to update at some point as well. And at the moment, as you can see, I've got them all. I've got them all doing slightly different versions of the recipe in an attempt to keep the the number of different insights I'm using reasonably well balanced. Um, but I do want to move over onto the more efficient method of doing this uh, reasonably soon when I, when I uh, when I actually can. Elsewhere, there are lots of other things that use um, use supercomputers. For example, all all of the um, the turning the turning turning all the data cards into science packs uses supercomputers. Why is this stopped? I'll have to have a look at that in a moment. Um, and this, but this one, there's no advantage to using a tier two supercomputer apart from it running twice as quickly. So in this case, I might as well just leave this running with a tier one supercomputer. There's, there's no point in upgrading. If I wanted to run faster, I can put in another another row of another six supercomputers over here. Now, the the other possible downside of that is that um, I, I, I might be able to get around the power um, increased power usage because it's quite possible that tier super, two supercomputers have more module slots. Let's check actually, because since I do have some here, yes, they've got an extra two module slots, so I could make them run faster, even faster. I could make them run more efficiently, so that would get, it increase the speed advantage quite a bit, and it would remove and negate the power disadvantage. So they're not completely useless, but they're not. I don't think they're really worth it. Now there should be catalogs flowing along here, but something has gone. Once again, I've got. Is it the same? Yeah, this place. There's something going wrong here. I don't know what it is, but this particular um, sub factory keeps over overfilling on thermofluid, and I don't know why. There's no. For some reason, it just keeps getting to the point where there's just too much in here. I. I've obviously got the the wiring, the balance wrong somewhere, but I don't know how. So along here, we've got all of the. I've actually not not linked up all of these. Let's do that. But it, it, this shouldn't. Oh, maybe it did matter. Oh, I. Maybe when I did when I didn't I didn't link that tank up. But all of these are linked together. We've got 114,000 thermofluid, subtra only subtracting 10k from it, and yet we've still got. Uh, it's, I don't know what's going on here. Why there's, why this is happening? Um, do I have tanks? I do have tanks. I do have tanks. Let's go over and sort that out because this is frustrating, very, very frustrating, and I don't know why it keeps happening. What if I put in storage tanks on some of the other types of thermofluid, the really cold ones? Up, so up here, let's put a tank for you and a tank for you. And what that'll do is it'll give me a bit more of a buffer and a supply of these things. But more importantly, it'll make these run as we drain out. Uh, it'll make these run and turn the warm thermofluid into the colder types of thermofluid. These tanks are working. We've, we've got the right amount in these. These are both 16,000. Um, <clears throat> 16,000 is a bit high, actually, but it is getting pumped through back into... Hmm. I don't think it can be because of these. But what, anyway, what this will do is it'll essentially take 25 thermofluid out of the system. So 50,000 thermofluid out of the system to go into the fill up these two tanks. And then we can get more of the warm stuff flowing back down here. Oh, that's in the... That's on the warm side. Oops, I didn't mean to put it there. <coughs> there we go. That's drained some of it out. That wasn't what I meant to do, but never mind. It'll have to do. Can I put that there? No, I can't. Can I put it there? Yeah. Yes. That's what I actually meant to do. No, it's not. I wanted to put it on. Sort it. Come on, Lawrence. Sort it. Sort it out. Get it. Get things right. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? What I actually meant to do is put one in here. So now I've got a tank. I've got tanks storing all the four temperatures now. So I've got the ones, all the ones down the bottom here, holding the the, the warm stuff, and that's getting pumped through these as quickly as they can manage it, um, and then turned into cool stuff which is being stored in this tank or at least will be once enough of it has been made and flows through. Cold. Ugh. 
so we've got warm stuff being stored in these tanks down here um, and being top kept topped up by the uh, by the um, the trains as, as as and when necessary that's flowing going into these these are all chilling it down to cool thermal fluid that's going on into here and being stored in these tanks so we're at the moment we're now draining out of these tanks just to make sure we try and keep the whole thing reasonably balanced so then going in through these ones that turns it into cold thermal fluid there's not very much of that that's getting used up as quickly as it's being produced by these ones that make it into super chilled thermal fluid um, and we're keeping that in there and we're keeping the cold one in here so eventually once the these machines are the um are the limiting factor at the moment once these have run enough to fill essentially fill up both these tanks again the system it should should all calm down a bit and fingers crossed the extra 50k that's going to go on from here into these is going to keep it balanced and right and not doing anything stupid please i hope i don't know i don't know why this has been being so such a problem but it really really has and i despair slightly okay that seems like a reasonably good place to finish um i've been talking i've, I've uh, had a reasonable amount to talk about there there's next up is on my to-do list is a bit more science i think so we'll, we'll get on with that fairly soon but for now i think this is all running let's let's check that um up here again no we're still practically full of oh no they are all running yes they're, they're all running again now yes we, here we go <laughs> six at a time coming out and so we've got loads and loads of the um, the input cards because that's been stored for ages even though it requires some of the coolants as well so that's that's all going quite well so i think i'm pretty much pretty much happy with this it's been a bit glitchy but it's, it seems to be working for now let's put another two tanks and then let's wire them up before i forget to like that's one there we go Okay, fingers crossed that's going to keep working and we'll make and we'll get all of the science we need from there. So, as always, thank you for watching. I hope this has been a good episode. We've had a bit of a bit of a think about the fueling system that's coming in and where everything's going to go in the future. So how we're going to where we're going to start taking these um, more advanced space these cargo spaceships and getting getting everything they need. So, until next time, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the show and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.